Yeah. Do you want to start? Oh no, it's always you. Okay, that's <laughs> good. Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking Those You Meet. I'm Jay. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be talking about The Killing Joke, the new Batman animated movie. Just came out. We've just been to the cinema to see it, and we've not spoke about it yet, so... So we're gonna, get, get down, down nerdy, nerdy with it. Just get, get down nerdy. Yeah, um, there um, will be spoilers. Yes, yeah, you have been warned. So either go read the comic, read the graphic novel, um, or go and watch it, I do here, as leaked online anyway. Once you've done that, come back. And watch this. Bit off the bat, um, yeah. I'm going to lay my cards on the table. I have not read the comic. Surprise, I know. Yeah, I, I did not read, said that. not read The Killing Joke, but JB has. So you're going to get the point of view of both sides. Uh, yeah, both sides. So, both if sides. so the person who's only see it, seeing this as an animated uh, film mm -hmm. and someone who's read the graphic novel wants to see a good adaptation, which straight away I'm going to say this was a great adaptation. I really enjoyed it, but I will warn people out there who have read the graphic novel, prepare yourselves, because it is essentially two films. Mm -hmm. it, well, I mean, I, I obviously, I know the story of The Killing Joke, so you liked it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. I mean, I, from the first, I first, I must admit, I was going into this film with a bit of trepidation, because when I'd heard that they were going to involve Batgirl, I mean, I knew they had to span the story out, thicken it up a bit, um, from reading the graphic novel to make it a feature length. I, I did think, oh, why are you changing a classic? And I'm glad they did it the way they did. Like I said, two films. So the first half is this story around Batgirl and Batman and their relationship and more about how Batgirl, giving a bit of backstory to her, to people who don't really know, which I think really helped to develop the character. Yeah, and really well, see... it, was, it was essential. I mean, obviously, as I said, I haven't read the book, so I don't know how it translates. I don't know what the difference is, but I'll ask you in a bit. But we needed that. Um, that introduction to Batgirl because otherwise it would have just been oh boom uh, Batgirl's well, been uh, paralysed yeah it know. wouldn't have had any it meaning to people had, who no, walked in wouldn't have had any, as much as an impact if mm. you didn't have that backstory with Batgirl and her relationship with Batman so that was nice which um, I want to point to go straight into relationship with Batman yeah because See, th that was odd <laughs> Well, I don't know how to feel is, about that. I'm going to ask you now, how true to the comic was this film? Well, I'm going to put, well this is what I'm Did gonna... you shag Batman in the comic? Well, no. <laughs> like, that's what I want to know. Because well, when it happened, I was like, oh no, they're not really going to... Oh my God, they are. I remember seeing Holy this. shit. Yeah. I was like, but Batgirl was like, what, 16 or something? I was like... Right, so in the, in the comic, this is why I keep saying to you, two different films. Yeah. The, the second part of the film, so where Batman is called Commissioner Gordon to Arkham Asylum, mm -hmm. yeah. that's where the comic begins. Right. Everything preceding that, so the entire really? thing with Paris, France. Yeah, so um, that wasn't in the Killing Joke comic. Not in the com comic at all. Oh. So this is, that was what I meant. It was quite clever for me because I I'm glad it thickened up the character for someone going in. Yeah. However, they didn't touch a classic. They didn't mess with the actual story mm -hmm. of the Killing Joke. They went, right, we need to make this longer. Well, rather than add extra scenes mm -hmm. in that aren't in the, okay. in the film, let's put something so, really chunky at the beginning, yeah. and then there's the See, film. See, that explains a lot for me now. Because I haven't told you what I thought about it yet, have I? No, no, go on, See, go on. This is what we're here I for. I wasn't... I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not gonna say I was disappointed. I was slightly underwhelmed with it. Oh, you sound like my mum. I was a little... <laughs> Because there's such a big hype about this, right? So the trailer's like, yeah, this looks amazing. Mark Hamill's back, Kevin Conroy's back. Uh, we're gonna get Batgirl as well. Mm -hmm. I love Batgirl. She's one of my favourite characters. Um, but for me, the most thing I was excited about seeing was obviously the Joker. You know, Mark Hamill as the Joker. And surprisingly, that was the part of the film that I didn't like as much. Oh God! Listen, man, right. I really, really enjoyed the first half of it. This story that wasn't in the Killing Joke book, <laughs> the story with Batgirl. I loved it. I thought the animation was bob on, the music, the, the atmosphere, the tone of it. Um, I loved Bat the way that Batgirl was represented. Um, the, the, yeah, the, the voice acting, everything was awesome in, in that first half. And I was like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And then the Joker comes on. And I'm like, oh yeah, stoked for this too. Uh, but something was a bit off. Like obviously Mark Hamill's performance was incredible. That was great. But the end half of it, which I'm finding out now, is the actual Killing Joke book. Yes. Felt a bit off. 
felt a bit rushed, felt a bit like it didn't fit in with the tone. Which would explain, because they are, they were two different yeah, chapters. these are two it different was chapters. Odd, man. I mean, obviously, I knew what happened to Barbara Gordon, I knew she got um, shot and paralysed and raped by the looks of it, you know. It's it's um, it's kind of implied, but yeah, you can tell... Well, they definitely, obviously, did something with her, because they put in that whole scene with the hookers, didn't they? Oh, obviously, he's found another girl, you know, so yeah, he's had his end away with Barbara yeah. Gordon. It's never said, but he did. He raped her. He, he shot her. He paralysed her. See, that's a very dark subject matter. That's a horrible thing. And I felt like the, that part of the film, they didn't really deal with it as as well as they should have done. That should have been like quite a dour, scary, horrible thing. Well, in the in the comic itself, they've they've it's true to that because they don't really deal with it. There's a lot of things that are left open so what did the Joker exactly do we don't know what does and again a very open thing and I could tell a lot of people in there were not really happy with the ending um, yeah. that is exactly how it ends in is the it? comic yeah. that is exactly how they, they just laugh together they just laugh together it pans down yeah. and the laughter fades out and stops it was, it's always been open to interpretation it's always been right. open to you believe what you want you believe what the Joker did with Barbara whatever you want you believe what happens at the end Batman realises one of us has to kill the other one. Yeah. So the Joker, that's why the Joker then tells a joke and right. about the Batman who can't crash, who jumps and the other one goes, no, nah, I'm not going to jump. Yeah. So, and then the idea is that they laugh together and then the reason Mark Hamill's laughter stops first is Batman kills him. Okay. But because he left it so open-ended, it was that's why it went into DC continuity, but it was meant to actually be just a one shot. Like it wasn't meant to be in. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be canon. It was meant yeah, to just meant be, be canon. a separate Batman story. Yeah, yeah. Itself. But that they, makes sense. they really stuck to it, and that's what I really liked about it because. From, yeah, from but what, I can understand from someone who's not really. Yeah. And you're going into this, going, I've heard so much about this, yeah. and seen these two stories quite juxtaposed to but each other. I like other. the one that wasn't the killing joke. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it was odd because like. That's obviously that that part of the film where Joker he he has his, the fairground and he has all these weird freak show cronies. Um, that could have been a really weird, dark, twisted, creepy animation, and in some parts it was. I think they did pull but some punctures. I, I don't think they know, did pull man. punctures. I mean, for example, that that Broadway song that they did, hmm. I thought it was just really odd and didn't fit in. I th imagine if the, if they had that exact. Obviously, they had to use the song. They had to use the lyrics that were mm. in the book. Yeah. But what if they did it in a really different kind of strange way? That like whole section of the film was handled a little bit differently, and made out to be. You know, it was just fifteen. The, it was a fifteen rated, rated mm. film. They could have done something really um, creepy with this end part of the film. I thought, and for me, it would. Just fell flat a little bit. I do you understand where I'm coming from? I know, I know, from? I know what you mean. I think they did, they were really brave doing this because it's a story where, as I said, with the they uh, how it, open yeah. it is, and like how you know from reading comics, you have your own interpretation of yeah. what that person's voice sounds like, how that person says that, what that panel means. And I think this was one of these ones where, it, to a lot of people, read it in very different ways, got very different stories from it, very different tones. As for instance, the song, people have read that in a load yeah. of different ways, and they've had to commit, yeah. they've had to commit to a way that this is done for the for the, you know, for everyone yeah. on on the cinema screen, and it is going to fall a little flat. I, yeah. I watched this and I was thinking, finally, I'm seeing it through the artist's eyes. So you you were happy with the I, adaptation? I would say I'm, I was really happy with it. That's how you read it? I, well, no, 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 no. That's no. the thing. I would say that isn't how I read it, mm. but I'm happy that I've seen it. I, 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 it's a true, I can see it's being the same true. It's not like they did something like Sony messing with Spider-Man, kind of twisting and changing things. And you're going, why does the Green Goblin now have green skin and his hair falling out it's actually this is how it was yeah. meant to be whether yeah. you like that or not they don't care that's yeah. how it was meant to be and i i liked it because it was so brave and bold and stuck true but then they and they didn't met like i said they didn't mess with it they had that first chunk of the start mm -hmm. which was brilliant and entertaining and then they had this and they were like going and now for our final presentation the killing joke here it is like it or not, yeah. and I and including really... Joker's origin story. Yeah, which inverted bracket. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, the he says thought. he chooses to pick yeah. his past. He has multiple pasts. Yeah. Is that the one that he doesn't know anymore? Again, in the comic, it's left totally open to interpretation yeah. of what whether he's remembering is true or not. Yeah, and so, 
Yeah. See, the, the, the problem that I have with it the most, obviously, we've just talked about it, um, about how I don't feel like the, the subject matter was handled seriously enough. I thought it was a bit too comic book, a bit too cartoony. Well, it's a, a comic book too, film. A bit too cartoony. Barbara Gordon's just been shot, paralysed, in front of her father, and then subsequently raped by the Joker, right? Correct. Bruce has, you know, had a relationship with this woman in some form or another, but he's very close with her. He obviously, you know, he loves her. He, why is he not fucking frothing at the mouth? Why is he not fuming? There was no passion there at all. And then at the end, they just laugh together. I know you've just explained that to me, but... But we don't, we don't know what Batman knows. Again, it's all open. We see him go to Barbara, and the last thing we hear Barbara say to him is, he's gone too far, where's my dad? We don't know if she has a conversation and says what's happened. He even says, actually, in the hospital room, they say something like, she, she was left out. He goes, I didn't yeah. know that. No one told me that. So he, we don't know what he knows. He might yeah. not know that. He might do, well, and still... being Batman and controlling it, because like he says in the first act, He's seen the edge and he doesn't want to go that his, far. His partner has been paralysed. The Joker has done the worst thing he has done to date to Batman. You know, it's got personal. Um, and for me, I wanted to see more um, emotion behind the bat. Well, I mean, that. we could talk about emotion. Like, what did you think of the animation? Well, the animation was fantastic. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. I thought it was excellent uh, the way they used obviously panels a bit of yeah and um, the action scenes were great they used obviously a bit of cgi in there at times mm -hmm. but that worked really well it still felt like a bruce tim cartoon it felt like i was watching an updated version of the 90s animated series mm -hmm. which is exactly what i wanted yeah, that it was, sounded like it with mark it Hammond sounded like it it was it, that was great the batmobile was so cool yeah yeah, yeah. cool as the batmobile you know i can't think of, of a thing i didn't like about it at the really? end of the day yeah. but yeah no i, I enjoyed i enjoyed it all i laughed i was horrified at some moments because it was finally i mean there's people getting shot in the head and oh yeah the and, violence was yeah yeah there's... really brutal they didn't pull any punches well they did plenty but well, they, they, they pulled pull punches <laughs> on the on the talking about the nitty gritty and leaving yeah. open to interpretation at the end of the day i think this is this is what it was truly meant to be the killing joke was this is this real this book of of ideas and and the relationship between the batman and joker and leaving you trying to see what the relationship is yourself of they're trying to search and find out what it is you are as well and you kind of left open to it and i did feel like that and the first half like i said is a separate film which is a good a good classic warner brothers animated batman i you really know, enjoyed film. the first half so, Loved it. it was only the second half which disappointingly had the joker in because it's a shame because i really wanted to like the bit with the joker Parts with Mark Hamill in, yeah, absolutely fine. You, I, but I'll tell you what, I might lend just, you, if I lend you the book, I, you might change your mind. It might make me understand the second half of the film a little mm. bit more. I would probably rate this... I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. I did really, really like it, but not, it takes a lot to be a 10 out of 10. And admittedly, like I said, I didn't agree with it all, but I just respected it for it, but I yeah. didn't agree with it. It's so like, again, that like you said, the song, I do think the song could have been darker as it's just words that rhyme in the book, but yeah. they, that was their you know interpretation should, and yeah. that was fine. Sorry to interrupt you, but you know what it should have been like? Like that boat ride on in the original Willy Wonka film, like that creepy, like... Oh my God, that's actually really good. Can you imagine that kind of weird, trippy, psychedelic... That's really good. ...messed up... Like acid trip. Yeah, that's what I imagine that part to be like. You know how it should have been. Why is no one hiring from Warner Brothers? Why is no one hiring Chris Wakefield? He always right comes here. up with a really good idea for you. Come on, DC. <laughs> You're doing shit in your cinematic universe. Get me on board. Go on. So what? Is... So sorry to interrupt. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm saying that's... eight out of ten. What would you eight give it? Right. If you could I was, it? I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I had some issues with it. Um, I loved the first half with Batgirl in. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it sort of went downhill when the Joker came in for me. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Mm. Um, I've seen a lot of DC animated films, and this, unfortunately, was not up there. Sorry, Phantasm. Mask of Phantasm is a lot better, in yeah, my no, opinion. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, That's right. Yeah. So, Mask of Phantasm I put up there. 
that's like a, an 8 or a 9 for me. So this has got to be a 7. You'd still recommend you know? people to watch oh, it, yeah, though, wouldn't you? Thoroughly, yeah. Buy it on Blu-ray, without a doubt. It's well worth a watch. Any fan of Batman or Especially what I fun. imagine the extras are going to be that we saw were brilliant interview with yeah. Mark Hamill yeah. talking about how he ended up being the Joker and also the added extras of seeing how they came up with the score, which for me, music is quite important and they really go into the importance of music and cinema and I, it really was entertaining The score was fantastic as yeah. well. Yeah. But yeah, we, we did both enjoy it. So to summarise, yeah. go and see The Killing Joke. Go well, see The Killing Joke. Or you can't go buy it, see it now because we're going to exclusive screening in the cinema. But yeah, yeah go buy it. Go buy it. Um, Alright. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. Yeah.